Uh, hi, my name is James Given. I am Community Manager on Brunswick Town. So we are on the road showing off uh, Diplin and the Viking Seeking faction. Um, obviously we, we moved out our release date to further May, so we're given a lot more chance to kind of having a look at the Viking factions and, and how unique they are in front of Britannia. So uh, the one we've been showing off today uh, is Diplin, who are the Vikings who have uh, set up on the coast of Ireland. Uh, so Dublin uh, originally was a Viking settlement. Uh, I never knew this, it was the first thing I ever, when, when I was uh, getting to play this game and, and Jack Loster kind of showing off uh, the, the names and the old style of, of, of all the Viking um, Saxon and, and the Welsh kind of naming uh, conventions. So you see that in the game, kind of like even though you might know the area geographically, you wouldn't know the uh, the names. It still transports you back to that time period. So you're starting off with the Sea, sea Vikings, and, and they're very much the raiding, pillaging, uh, conquering, and slave taking kind of faction. Uh, where the other Vikings, uh, the Great Heathen Army, uh, they're more of a settled Vikings. They're the ones who are kind of uh, dealing with uh, the integration of uh, kind of six Saxon kingdoms with the Viking army. Um, but we're kind of showcasing the Vikings who, you know, the ones that come from the sea and take slaves and destroy settlements and, and kind of like raid and conquer. In front of Britannia, we're very much more focused on characters than, say, you know, a, 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 a nation. So in Rome, you, you, would, you would have like uh, legions and so forth, which would continue their traits and so forth. The leaders were very important, but it's something that could change. Uh, in, in front of Britannia, we're all about the characters uh, and, and, and making them your own. If, this is an era where it wasn't as such that armies would stay in the field for a long period of time. They were following the, 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 the warlords, they were following, following the warrior kings, you know. Um, and when those kings died, you know, those armies, you know, wouldn't always stay together. They would drift off and find someone else to follow. Um, so in, in front of Italian, how we reflected that is in followers and in traits and, and how your characters develop over time. And if you lose your king in a campaign, it can be disastrous. All of a sudden you have infighting between your other, other uh, heirs or your other commanders and you'll see your faction dissolve quite quickly if you don't keep a hold of that. Um, and it's all about reflecting the kind of cut pro nature of that kind of time period. It's all about strong men, it's all about the character of, of, of a person, you know, if they're able to hold together the small and fledgling kind of kingdom. Yeah, so in, in, in uh, sagas, the time of the first saga title in front of Britannia, we really kind of want to make it be a smaller um, kind of geographical area, and um, maybe less sweeping than like Rome and Empire and, and, and UK, but definitely a lot more focused in kind of what's going on geographically. Still a, a, an incredibly important moment in history. Uh, this is the kind of the beginning of what would become England and, and Scotland, in, uh, Ireland and Wales. But still, uh, you know, a lot going on and that's what we have. We have the most detailed map of the British Isles ever and it gives us a, a whole kind of canvas to play with on that. It still takes ages to move one army to the end of the map. As, as you see today, there's so much there but it's a, a, a much more focused story and kind of like a one it's up to you to develop your own. It's still a sandbox, always, it always has been, always will be in a total game, but you know, it's always about the British Isles in this one and, and how the Vikings and the, the Welsh, the Scots and the Saxons all kind of develop their kingdom. Well, this is our chance to go and do time periods that were a bit more limiting. Um, the Viking invasion of, of, of Britain and, and conquest and so forth, technically doesn't have any big, um, you know, technological advances. It's an era pretty much of the shield wall and, and Vikings of axes and swords. You know, there isn't any big radical difference in, in combat, which you would have seen, say, be in, in Rome 2, where you would have pikes, you would have the, the legion, you would have elephants, heavy cavalry. There was so much of variety in, in, in warfare in that time and development. And this time it's, it's, it's not, but that's great because it means for other titles, we can go into time periods that maybe were um, maybe less developed in, in their um, variety of combat. But because the time period itself brings out such a variety in, in kind of playstyle or, you know, just in, in variation of like location. Um, and there's so many conflicts in history that we can go to with the saga style 
and obviously, you know, the Viking invasion of Britain is one of them. How has it changed our approach to, to game design? Most definitely because it has to be a lot more focused um, and in both mustering, uh, and bringing in troops from, uh, from a global recruitment pool, um, you know, uh, settlements not having garrisons, uh, forcing you having to go out and defend your territories a lot more from border raids and stuff like that. And also technology tree, but is now only, it is now related to what you're doing. Not just, I want to, I want to have this, uh, research because I want it right now. You have to have done something on the campaign to actually be able to get that. I think there's a whole host of a different approach you have to do when you have a, a kind of a, a smaller package as you do in front of Britannia. And I think that's been done really well on that so far by Jack and his team. From a historical perspective, um, things I've learned on front of Britannia while, while, while working with the dev team has been the effect of the Vikings had on the British Isles outside of just the Saxons. So when I grew up, I'm from the northeast of England, you know, Linda's Farm is one of the very first places attacked by the Vikings, you know, the monastery of all the monks, and all of a sudden the Vikings come out of a mist and, and, and destroy and, 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 and so on. I knew that story, I've always known that story, I've grown up with that story. Um, Alfred the Great defeating the Vikings and so on, I know all that. I did not know that they attacked um, all of Scotland, I never knew that they invaded island and conquered huge parts of territory but the vikings also would go on to you know discover the uh you know parts of canada and greenland and, and americas before anyone else they also invaded they, they went up the um um the french uh, coast as well they attacked paris they conquered uh, what would eventually become uh, normandy you know they had a massive impact but they weren't always warriors they were also amazing merchants as well and they helped connect uh, the whole of northern europe uh, via the sea um, and when it comes as a gameplay the things we've learned is you know how much you can do by you know focusing on, on kind of like making sounds fun and interesting to attack and today we had like a really cool siege battle and one of the coolest ever with like little ravines where you can have like little choke points and, and, and uh, ships coming in from the coast and landing more troops down. There's so much you can do with the siege battles. And uh, you know, it, 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 in Warhammer, they were a lot more um, uh, streamlined and, and we had big like, set walls and we'd come forward. And in our historical games, we always try to make our siege battles, you know, the star. And I think they're some of the best we've ever had in a total game in front of the time. So there's no new features in the Siege Battles, but what we had is we definitely try to make sure that the, the maps themselves uh, feel really unique. So we have 16 new maps, um, which are, you know, very, very unique. Uh, today we, we were talking about the one with, with all the ravines. There's another with kind of like set levels. Uh, so it kind of looks like that kind of minister of kind of map. Um, we put a lot of effort into making the maps just feel very different and unique. So you'll find them all the way through your campaign. There's one which has the old kind of Roman walls, and that, that's represented as there were still Roman walls and Roman settlements all over the UK, which had that idea of like concrete walls, Roman concrete, you know, something which only today we've only worked out how they were able to make such long lasting settlements, you know, and you can fight over those settlements as well. The ones that you've seen and, and, and so uh, that you'll predominantly find on the campaign, there'll be kind of uh, the wooden and, and earth, but there'll be some stone walls as well, and they'll be even harder to take because obviously you know, it's a lot bigger. Um, so it's really unique in that kind of way, and then a variation of uh, siege battles you will never see in total before. So this is our first ever Sargus title, so we're still kind of working out how it fits in there with, with our kind of like releases, but you know, you're, you're going to be seeing our big tempos like uh, 3K and, and, and Warhammer, but you'll be seeing Sargus along the way, like c coming in when it can, and, and you know, going to time periods we've never done. Before. So Total War Sargus, uh, Front of Britannia is coming out on Windows and on the 3rd of May.